For this last video, let's go through and see how to make 2D and we'll, we'll do a 3D graph too. And to begin, the first thing we need to do, oh, it's trying to do some autofill. The first thing we need to do is create some arrays. And to do that, let me come over to the command window for just a reminder on how to use colons. So if I say 1 colon 10, it's going to give me a list of numbers here, OK? Or if I maybe want to do a step of 1 tenth, I'll just go out to 1 for this one. So for this, I can use colons to create lists of numbers. And three numbers, the first number is where you start. The second number is the step size. And then the last number is where you end. So I'm going to go ahead and create a list of numbers and let's go let's use some sine and cosine functions for our first graph so I'll go ahead and create a line of numbers that goes from negative 1 and what should our step size be I'll use something like I don't know we'll use a nice small step size so we get a good some good lines okay so so that will give us a list of numbers and then we can do things like y is equal to sine of x, where that will actually give us a whole list of numbers. So everything in x will go into sine. Let me do a, a shorter one again over here. So if I say x equals, at no, we'll say negative 1. And for, for the command window, I'm going to do a much smaller step just so that you can see it. Okay, so there's a very small step from negative 1 to 2 pi. And then if I say sine of x over here, it's going to evaluate everything in there at each number. So we're this is generating lists of numbers over here. Okay, so the first thing we can do is maybe just go ahead and plot y. So there's a whole bunch of different graphs in Octave, just like Excel. There's scatter plots and histograms and 3D graphs, but let's go ahead and start with just a regular old plot. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start this up and here comes our figure and you can see we have just a nice graph of sine x. What is on the x-axis here from 0 to 70, that's actually the number of elements in this. So it's not graphing it with respect to x, it's graphing it with respect to the number of the elements. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this graph. And instead of just plotting y, let's go ahead and put x on the x-axis for this one. So I'll go ahead and run this again with x on there. And now instead of 0 to 70, we have negative 1 up to 2 pi. So we actually have our array on the x-axis, and then the sign is on the y-axis for plotting x and y. OK, let's pop over into the Octave Documentation Center and see what kind of options they have for us. So here's their two-dimensional plots section, and they have some examples with sine waves, cosine waves, and some more examples. This guy right here, the formatting, we haven't done that yet. So let's say we want to change the color of the line or add points and decide. So here's here's a few things for line style, the different types of points you can put on there, if you want to change the color. So there's a few formatting. Let's try a couple of these, and I'll throw those in the notes. OK, so let's try out a couple of those formatting features. Remember what this default graph looks like. So let's see if we can change that line around. Right now it's blue. Maybe we want a black line, which had the symbol K. Or maybe we wanted that line to be dashed instead of a solid line. For all the formatting features, you just pile them right on top of one another on that third unit there. OK, so here we go. Now we have a black line and it's dashed. OK, what if we would like to put a second line onto that graph too? So I don't know, maybe instead of just 
sine, we want cosine too. What we can do is just keep adding the pairs of numbers on here. So now x and instead of y, I'm going to put z, which is attached to cosine. We'll try it with this one. So here we go, and there's the first dashed line, and here's our new cosine curve. And again, if I wanted to format that, I can add some things there too. So maybe I want points that are zero on that or a dashed line and I don't know, maybe magenta or something. So you can go ahead and format everything however you want, add as many lines as you want. Okay, let's just play around a little bit, add a few more lines. Let's see, you could maybe make a little unit circle out of that, sine, cosine. We could reverse which is on what axis, we'll put y first or z first instead. Maybe we want to, I don't know. So I'll have you guys just make something fun and artistic for this. Let's play around with that unit circle and see if we can maybe make a, um, a star. So remember how we made the unit circle. It was just a um, sine x, cosine x. Make sure that that's coming up correctly. So just a, a nice circle. And if we want to make a star, then we can choose points in here and divide it. Maybe how many points on, on the star should we do? Let's create a new array of numbers. And this time, we'll use a spacing of pi over 3. That might give us a six-pointed star. So we'll take this new spacing, and instead of doing a plot, we're going to try a scatter, which is only going to do points instead of the entire line. So we'll use our new array that we created. And maybe we'll format the points on here. So we'll make the points little circles and what color shall we make them? Maybe red, I think. One more thing I'm going to add, because we now have a plot and a scatter, if I want both of those on the same graph, I'm going to have to say, hold on. So I'll add that hold on there, and now we will go ahead and see if we can get our graph to pop up. So now we have a blue circle. And we also have these red dots. And if we connect these dots, we should be able to turn that into a star. Let's create this one triangle at a time. So we'll grab three points by making our step pi over 1.5. Remember, plot connects points. Scatter just draws the points, but plot will connect the points. So here's this triangle. And now we can make another triangle by just starting at a different spot. So we're making another array, but now we're going to start at negative pi over 1.5 instead of negative 1. Use that same step size. And we'll make another line using this new array to create another triangle here. So there's a star. And if we've gone this far, might as well go a little bit farther. So if we put this in a for loop, okay, and we'll start with just a few loops around here, and then we can add more in the future. But if we create an array that kind of changes the starting point every time we go around this loop and just draws triangle and then goes around the loop and maybe draw another triangle, we can have a little bit of fun. So there's five iterations. If we um, pause it, then we can watch this thing as it's drawing it. And let's go around the entire circle. For lab, I'm going to have you guys create your own pattern with this. These patterns were actually created from planetary orbit. So if you can get something like that, I'd give you bonus points. But any any pattern or fun design will be just fine for this lab. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up a new file, this one with a little yellow starburst on there. So see my old one's still there. And I'm going to show you how to make a histogram, and then we'll do a 3D graph. Once again, we're going to need to start out with some kind of a data set. Let's go ahead and create a random number distribution. And you can actually create a normally distributed random numbers, which is kind of a nice little set. We do 100 of those. If you ever forget how to create these sets, just come back over to the command window and try it out again. So like if I have just the random number, rate, and I'll just do 10 numbers here. So this is between 0 and 1, random numbers between 0 and 1. Versus, and you can't really tell the difference between rand and rand with the n at the end by just looking at the numbers, but this would create normally distributed random numbers instead of just random random numbers. Okay, so that'll be a little bit more interesting for a histogram. There's actually quite a few different types of bar charts. So if I just make a plain old bar chart of that number distribution and show you what that looks like. It's, it's not very interesting. You can turn that bar chart on its side by adding H, make it a horizontal bar chart. So now it's going up and down instead. So that's one type of graph. The histogram is actually going to count up how many numbers occur in various different bin sizes. So this is where we'll be able to see the the normal distribution of it. And once again, for all of these different graphs, you can come to the Documentation Center for two-dimensional plots. Scroll through, there's a lot here. So here's histograms, there's bar charts with all kinds of options and extras to, to study out. And of course, anything that doesn't make sense in the Documentation Center, just Google it. And you can find people, there's a lot of people making videos of this stuff out there. Okay, last graph. Let's go ahead and look at how to make something in 3D. For this one, we'll have to make kind of a unique data set here. And MeshGrid is a great tool to do that. I'm going to... Um, go ahead and play around with that over here in the command window a little bit so you can see what's going on with the mesh grid command. I'll make just a, a small array here. If you assign this thing to variables, so say x and y, what this will do is actually create one of those grids for both x and y. And you can grab elements out of that array just like any array, but it's just kind of a nice little tool for, um, for creating an array to plug in. So now we need an equation that has things going on in three dimensions. So we have an x, y, and a z in here, and we'll use the surface command. So there it is. There's um, a couple extra tools that you can grab so you can rotate this thing around. So pretty neat.